Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkter back again, FL Studio. Today I'm going to set up a quick and fun little crowd simulator and we're going to use this to get a response from a fake audience to cues from the mic or our instrumentation. And it's actually quite easy to set up. If you haven't worked with uh, fruity formula controllers yet, uh, this is a great opportunity. It's a very simple, it's a very simple piece that we're going to use, and it's a great way to get introduced to the different mappings and um, mathematics that get involved. Although we're not going to touch on any of the advanced things in this particular tutorial. This is how we get started. Uh, first, get yourself a get yourself a bunch of samples. In this case, I have some samples of crowds, crowd applause, and I've made a channel or a uh, pattern of just some sort of miscellaneous crowd noises. Anyway, map all of those samples, if you're using more than one, map those to one particular mixer insert. Alright, and um, you can use effects on it if you want. I'm using just a little bit of reverb. Have one insert that's only used for your voice. Now, I can't do that with my particular encoder because it doesn't use the ASIO drivers, but uh, what I'm going to do is pretend we have live mic uh, just by using... How's everybody feeling tonight? Using an Edison sample I recorded. So, just pretend that it was live. And because we want our crowd to respond not only to our voice but also to the instruments that we're going to use, I'm going to do this particular setup on the master insert track or the master mixer insert call it whatever you want okay so here's what we do we need two peak controllers and I've labeled one long decay and one short decay because that is the chief difference between these two uh, when we play a bit of sound here watch how the different peak um, the peak values that's the one in the center of these three watch how they respond how's everybody feeling tonight citizens of earth now when I stop it, the short decay one fades out almost immediately, and the long decay takes as long as 8 or 10 seconds for a very loud sample. Now that's important. See, we don't want our crowd to be going constantly. We don't want our crowd uh, to, to be shouting while we're shouting. So what we're going to do is set up a formula controller to very simply subtract the short decay from the long decay. Okay, that will shut up the crowd when, when we talk, but as soon as we stop, um, it's going to respond based on the amplitude uh, that we gave, or you know how loud we are in the mic. So this is, it's really easy to, to get a feel for it once, once you try it out. Okay, um, create a formula controller. I've labeled, one, I've labeled mine subtract, because that's all it's doing. And the formula is as follows, A minus B plus C, okay? That means that C is going to represent for us a sort of base, baseline crowd noise. So we can sort of uh, manipulate that if we need to adjust in real time. Now the A mapping, I'm going to link this to my long decay peak. And the only thing you've got to do is set the smoothing all the way up. It's going to sound a lot better if you put some smoothing on it. Um, the, the mapping formula is default. And also for B, although although I'm using the short decay, that's the only difference. Again, the smoothing is all the way up, and we're using the default mapping formula. So what that means is, if you now watch the formula output, you'll see that it stays low. It sort of jitters a bit, but it will stay low when I'm talking. And once I stop talking, that's when it's going to peak. How's everybody feeling tonight, citizens of Earth? Yeah, guys ready to rock and roll? <laughs> yeah, all right. So, um, the next step is now that we have all of our all of our um, crowd noise on one particular mixer insert, we come in here and we link this controller to our formula controller out. In this case, subtract out, and no special mappings involved, no smoothing, just just right to the output. So what this means is, with this particular setup, we're already done. You may want to fine tune some of your some of your DK settings, only because that's going to determine how loud 
and how quick to respond and the length of the response that the crowd will give you. So um, this is some of the things we can do with it. I've got both uh, some applause and some laughter so you can just get a good a good idea of the things you can do. This is what it would sound like. How's everybody feeling tonight, citizens of Earth? Yeah. You guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. First, I got a joke. What the Snoop Dogg used to clean his clothes? I'll tell you. He uses bleach. <laughs> All right. So trust me, you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, this will this will give you a pretty accurate and pretty responsive crowd um, for laughter or for booing or for just applause. Uh, you might find some other uses for it, um, but these are the, the three that I use. So, um, because it's on the master track, again, all we've got to do is feed a song through it, and it'll you know it'll pretty pretty well replicate the sound of of a live performance in a crowd setting. Um, <laughs> assuming that they actually like your music, otherwise you can use the boo track. Anyway, um, it's a lot of fun to play with. You'll find it's very responsive when you have your microphone on the line in for the voice channel. Uh, it works really well, and you'll have a lot of fun with it. This is Ace Pinkter signing off. <laughs>